Um, okay, so let's see. Uh, I was playing with the five spiral because, um, you know, I was doing some uh, interesting math. I, I found some very interesting, uh, as a result of an interaction with a friend of mine, I found some interesting function to the five spiral that, um, that I've never seen anywhere else. Now, I might be missing something, but uh, I found that uh, the phi spiral behaves in a way where it generates boundaries, condition, a very specific radius from each other. If you, if you array uh, the, the spiral in an appropriate way. You know how you, know, you can build phi from a phi rectangle? So you, you can build a curved phi from a phi rectangle, right? So you, so you take a phi rectangle and then you divide it so you get a, another phi rectangle and then you can put another curve and you know you keep doing the curve right at any point as you're doing the bigger and bigger curves you can keep replicating the same scale curve and you'll get a circle that encircles a phi spiral and that's actually when you look at shells they're typically like that. Like, we're also making interferometry highlight energy nodes. Right. The, the cool thing is where you end up with the phi spiral in the circle is not, the phi spiral doesn't go to the center. It goes off center. And when you put the rodent, you know... The mathematical fingerprint of God. Yeah. It, the center of that is exactly the phi spiral center inside the circle. Right. Yeah, that, I thought that was really remarkable. Then if you array the, the phi spiral, you get interference pattern that produce like horizons, you know, um, division of the space. It, it's remarkable. It, 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 and no, it the word, you need to see the images. What he's saying is he's creating reinforcement patterns, I think, might be. Yeah, right. or standing waves. Yeah, between the phi ratios you get boundary conditions so now you got a spiral that has an infinite like continuum but that produces boundary conditions so you get this relationship with between the bounded world of quantum theory and the, the fluidity and the continuum of uh, Einstein field equations and but but what the relationship to Marco's um, mathematics is stunning so, cause you, right, but but when you look at his at his little map, there's no reason to believe that phi is involved. Right. None. There's no division of the space. My work that is so innocuous. It's so it's so um, inobtrusive. It looks like somebody came up with some their own petroglyphs or something. Right. It, because there's there's not there's nothing because it's there's nothing conventional today that it's an you know it's an original discovery and my claim always was that anything you take in math or science I said if it was ever an error one time you discard it and he's a scientist he does things by analysis he does it by experimentation trial and error so the honor that I get the privilege to be you know, it's like, a, um, it's, it's a very rewarding for me. It's a, um, I'm that, very blessed. But I think it's significant because it's really... Uh, I think significance is an understatement. Right. It, it's really a remarkable that from a, such a simple, you know, drawing, you get a perfect phi relationship, you know, that you wouldn't get, you, you wouldn't expect. You know, you really wouldn't expect it. Like you don't have like a dodecahedron, icosahedron, you don't have any of this stuff. You know, it's a it's a division in nine, right? Yeah, it, there's nothing in there that you that would you expect a phi ratio to come out of. When I teach math, I remember when I was teaching and we gave the talk or even in the evening and it's just so off the wall. And I make such outrageous claims, like my friend here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do them in physics. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I claim mathematical perfection. I claim, you know, the mathematical fingerprint of God. How much farther can I go, right? <laughs> but it stands up no matter what you throw at it. It likes to be dissected and it likes to be applied. Let me see if I can get maximum expansion on this. 
Uh, um, uh, well, it, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm going to show you what was relevant to Marcos. Uh, the rest of the stuff is kind of neat. Maybe I'll, I'll get to it soon. Okay, so... Um, Check that out. Uh, oh, yeah. I was playing with... Um, oops. I was playing with... Um, well, let me just do the five first. Take Marco's uh Okay, so I was I was uh, building a five spiral, and you know um, I was uh, building it using you know five relationship by segments, and at one point uh, when my five my spiral was approximately here. I just continue to add segments without changing their relationship to each other. Meaning, I continue to add segments to my spiral, but instead of increasing my segment length 1.618 every time, I just kept the same ratio. And within a few segments, uh, I had a perfect circle coming back, right? And that circle, um, you know, um, uh, encompasses the spiral dynamic, but interestingly, the spiral is not in the middle of the circle. And uh, I thought that was interesting because when we plot uh, orbitals of particles falling into a black hole, we usually plot them on a geodesic in which the center of the spiral is the center of the black hole. Right? But it doesn't naturally do this if you're doing it geometrically. So I thought that was interesting. But I was playing with this and Andre looks at me and goes, Hey, that's not in the middle. And I'm like, yeah, no, it doesn't fall in the middle. I'm trying to figure out what the ratio that is. And it's Marco around. And uh, he said, wait a minute, do a Marco, you know, crazy geometry trick. <laughs> uh, I'm like, okay, um, uh, with, the, uh, with, with, with the CAD program, I was able to reproduce it, and uh, sure enough, turns out that the spiral uh, vortices uh, intersect exactly where um, your, what you call your emanation point right. is, which is not in the middle of the sphere, neither. And when you look closely at the spiral, see, uh, you might, usually I don't do this with the, this mouse, this is really kind of crappy. No, it's just bad. Okay, uh, when you look closely, I find this very significant. It never really. Yeah, that's what I'm amazing about spiral. It never reaches any. But it never intersects that point. The point actually is, probably is more precise than the spiral. Uh, the spiral is trying to get to that point. And it'll never get there. That's actually a good way to um, show geometrically what an irrational number is. Because you never get to it. Right. So the spiral is like you're approaching this number, you know, the, the, the decimal place is going out and out. So you can keep bringing them out, and you never quite get there, you know. Right. So, um, I don't want to take any more, too much time. I'm very grateful that um, it's another, I, uh, I, another um, is verification, yeah. so confirmation. It's almost um, like, can I say this? Yeah, yeah. Because I, yeah. It's almost as if once you define the boundary, so we all have different words for that, but once you define the resolution or the fractal boundary of a phi spiral, you've now defined where the center is, and that center is the emanation point, which is consistent with Marco's work, which is consistent with Bob Blood's work, who was talking about, Bob Blood was talking about number threes, everything comes with threes, mm. and the torus, and it's, the point is, once the sim, rounded it off and made a boundary, you now defined like a centering point, which you notice is not truly in the center, but consistent with Marco's work.
And Tony Smith has done a lot of my work on his website, too. I've just had an incredible good vision because as more as people try and disprove it or at least dissect it, then it, it always um, has held up. I want to mention one other thing, and it's really off the wall. Um, I de how I got the equation for this is I decrypted what's called the Most Great Name of God, and it's out of what's called the Baha'i Faith Scripture, and which is really bizarre. And it talked all throughout the Scripture how it equaled nine, and it represented the unapproachable, treasured, preserved knowledge. And so that's what I was decrypting, is I was trying to mathematically using Arabic and Persian and using what's called Abjad numerical notation system, which is a part of the Arabic language. I was trying to decipher the name of God. And it wasn't that hard. They said it was impossible, but I figured out how to do it because the Aleph represents the number one. And it just wasn't that hard, really. So that's why I, where I got my equations from, was out of the scriptures, which is, which is the most interesting part, really. Okay, so, uh, so just, to, like, just to finish on this, uh, what I had just uh, what I had just figured out um, from uh, prior to uh, figuring this out for um, is that um, is that if actually you see when we look at the path of a particle going into a black hole, we keep doing this. We only look at one particle, like there would be only one particle falling into the black hole. But that's not the case at all. There's thousands and thousands of particles falling into the black hole. And this is only the path of one particle. So what happens if I multiply, multiply this path, let's say, by uh, 12 elements? So now we've got 12 uh, particles falling into the black hole. Okay. Uh, let me just show you in graphic form so I don't have to rebuild it. Uh, I'm just showing that like if you actually multiply the spirals, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that so that you don't just have the path of one particle falling into a black hole, but you got a whole bunch of particles falling into a black hole. Coming in random? Well, not random. Not random. At equidistance, or you know, if you take instead of taking the path, the math of one only one particle falling in. Well, let's say you have twelve, or and they're at equidistance. Right at equidistance. Okay. Uh, or or you got you know. Oh, the Right. These boundaries just appear right out of the five spirals. Which are more happy. Yeah, because the, the spirals actually touch and then gets wider and touch again together and creates boundary conditions like rings, like fractal rings. Those are rings. rings. Yeah. Wait, are you saying the, the ring? You made a big discovery if we can figure out what you've discovered you discovered on the Well, it will try to event horizons. Are you saying you did enhance those rings? No, no, that's just, that's a, just a plot. Um, that's yeah, cool. they interfere yeah. with each other and cool. go wrong. Right? Yeah, cool. see it? Wow. So, so how does that relate to what Paul you showed, which you showed the universal expansion, which was also in that wave type of form? Remember, remember his model where everything was happening? And then the next one was half the size, and then half the size. Uh -huh. And that's I mean, and that's this, is I like, this like this is like um, this is like 256 spirals, right? All arrayed, and you can see now. You can see, and I zoomed out, yeah. so you can see that you start to see more and more rings being it's, it's formed. It's an um, interference pattern. Right, yeah. right. And, uh, and the resolution is really but you get really you get circular boundaries uh, out of a fine continuum, which is is quite amazing.